The Dustlin sweater is a new West Knits pattern designed for DK or worsted weight yarn. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some of the yarn details and texture details up close of this garment and a few other projects that you can knit with DK and worsted weight yarn in this Dustland stitch pattern. So my very first projects when I designed this Dustland texture was kind of a Gansey inspired collage of stitch patterns. And one of the first patterns I did was this Dustland hat, which is just a one skein DK or worsted weight project. And then you may have seen the Dustland shawl, which uses four skeins of yarn. And it's really simple, really beginner friendly. All you have to know how to do is to knit and purl and there's some garter stitch breaks in between those stitch patterns. So I'm wearing the new Dustlin sweater in the large size, and I'm gonna show a couple pictures of the Dustlin sweater along with the sizes and measurements right here. So I designed the sweater in nine sizes, and when you're selecting your size, you'll notice the finished measurements. And these finished measurements are the aim size that the final sweater will be, depending on your gauge. So I do recommend to do a gauge swatch, but check these sizes extra small, small, medium, up to 5XL, and look at the finished measurements. That's gonna be your finished sweater size. And uh, I'm wearing the large size, and I chose a size a bit bigger in the finished measurements than my actual size. So there's a little bit of extra space on the left and the right, so it's a really cozy, simple sweater. There's no body shaping or waist shaping. It's your standard top-down yoke sweater construction. But if you wanna customize the length, pick your size, Aim for at least two to four inches, five to 10 centimeters of positive ease. So that means you wanna pick a size that's a little bit bigger than your actual bust or chest circumference. So I chose a size that was four inches or 10 centimeters more than my um, chest size. And that's really roomy and cozy. So this is the large size using about six skeins of La Bienne May Cori. And I'll show you later some up close um, clips of that Cori yarn, but it's one of my favorite yarns to knit with for the Dustlin sweater because it's solid and simple, so it really shows off that stitch definition and those Gansey stitch patterns. But uh, the yarn is non-superwash, so it's really crispy and wooly as well. So that heathered yarn really gives dimension to the stitches, and it's just really beautiful and cozy to knit with. So I definitely recommend trying that La Bienne May Cori worsted, and all you have to do is pick one color. That's very different from most West Knits projects that have five or six colors to choose. So pick your favorite, something really light in the color will really showcase the stitch patterns. But if you choose this dark blue, this Winterfell color, you'll get these moody, more shadowy stitch details in your sweater. So here's a small size. I also had a version knit in Westwool Tandem, which is our DK weight yarn. And uh, you could use the same yardage requirements DK or worsted weight. So just start with the yarn base that you like and then choose the recommended yarn amount. But right here, you'll see another photo of me wearing the sweater and the yarn requirements. So if you're gonna use a yarn like La Bienne May Cori Worsted or Westwool Tandem, these yarns have about 250 yards or 230 meters per skein. And these are the skein requirements that you'll need per size. So all these details are listed in the pattern, but let's dive in close and look at those stitch patterns in detail. Here you can see the Cori Worsted and that beautiful shadowy heathered quality. It just gives a really nice dimension to the fabric. So you can see this cocoa sweater. This is the sweater knit in the large size with the cocoa colorway. And even that bright limey green, it has those dark gray heathered undertones. So what that does in the fabric, it really lifts up the knit pearl patterns and just it makes it more exciting to knit and not as bland. You get to see this beautiful lighting effect throughout the fabric. But here are some other uh, color examples. If you like any of these colors or any colors from the Cori Worsted range, we have a lot of kits available at stephenandpenelope.com. So you can just pick your size and pick your color. So find a color you like and then click on your size for the sweater, and then it'll automatically give you the amount of skeins that you need to knit your size. And this is the sandstone color. And what I really love that Amy did when she dyed all these colors is she put a lot of neutrals. So there's like a warm neutral, there's like a cold neutral, there's like five or six grays, which is just uh, so delightful. You can really pick which kind of light or dark tone you want. Sandstone is a really nice kind of light, medium, 
a little on the warm side. Definitely that sandy color. This was one of my favorite grays that they dye called Mist because it's dark, but it's still light enough to show stitch details and it has a blue tint to it. So if you like cold grays that have a little hint of color, definitely try Mist and in, anywhere between four and eight skeins, depending on your size. I used six skeins for my large size. And this is Winterfell, a really dark navy, almost black blue. And it's really stunning, but there's still a little bit of light moments. So you're still gonna see some stitch texture, but definitely more subtle. So if you're maybe knitting this sweater as a gift for someone that doesn't really care as much about the detail you're knitting, do the detail, do the stitches for you, but they can just have a dark blue sweater, okay. <laughs> and this red is really lovely called Coquelico. I think I'm saying that right. Coquelico, I don't know. This is, a, it's a beautiful red, okay? It's red, but it has that shadowiness and I just love it. It's like this fiery flame emerging from these heathered gray ashes. So lots of yummy colors to choose from. And here's that Dustlin sweater up close and it's top down. So when you cast on the sweater, you're gonna do some ribbing at the top. And I recommend using a smaller needle. That's one of my tricks for sweaters is use a one size needle smaller for the ribbing and it just makes it a little more crisp and tidy so it doesn't flare or stretch out too much. After you do the ribbing with the top down knitting, you're gonna start doing some garter stitch short rows. And those are really easy and fun to knit. You just stop your row, turn around and go, and you see that that raises the back of the neck. So it gives a really comfortable fit on the sweater and just rests on your shoulders and doesn't choke the front of your neck. It dips down really nicely. And then you continue with these diagonal ribbing and these moss stitch and broken column stitches. So there's three stitch patterns that you see here and they're just repeated throughout the sweater. So as you go throughout the sweater, it becomes quite easy to memorize those stitches because you're doing them over and over again, but it's always changing. So as soon as you get a little bored of one stitch, you do a garter stitch break and onto the next section. So I definitely recommend this sweater. If you're a first time sweater knitter, all you need to do is pick one color and these easy garter stitch sections give you a little break in the mind. You don't have to think about if you're knitting or purling. You're just knitting a whole round or purling a whole round and you just work it all the way to the bottom. And I made a bit uh, longer ribbing here. Um, I wrote the pattern to give about this much ribbing, but it's your sweater. So if you want to customize it and make a longer ribbing, I mean, you could even turn this into a sweater dress. That would be really fun. And after you're done with the body, the sleeves are last. I do my sleeves one at a time and that's just my style. But if you're worried about running out of yarn, you could do two at a time sleeves and work with two different balls of yarn, work in a round of each sleeve. But I just work my sleeves one at a time. And again, you can customize the length of those sleeves. Here are just a few more of my favorite colors of Cory Worsted. So you, we have the original Coco in the large size sample. This blue is called Hegelia. It's really lovely, a really light misty blue. Um, definitely more blue than that mist color. This is more gray for sure. So it's quite a sky blue with those stormy clouds in the heathered gray moments. This is Dawn. It's a really blush, a medium toned blush pink Dawn. Rust is just one of the best saturated oranges. I love it. If you really love orange, you definitely want to try Rust in La Bienne May's Superwash yarns like a singles or a sock yarn, because it is so vivid and really flashy and rustic. But that's the rust colorway. And for you pinky purple lovers, this is Lisa, L-I-S-E, Lisa. And it's a beautiful fuchsia, kind of magenta, very saturated. So you'll still get those stitch pattern details, but definitely a bit more dark and saturated with that juicy pink pop. This is one more sample in the small size, and this is an example with Westwool Tandem. So this is our pebble colorway in Westwool Tandem, and you'll need the same kind of yardage requirements and skein amounts if you wanna try that yarn. And we have a lot of solid colors. So if you want a more simple solid yarn without that heathered quality, you could pick your favorite color pop or neutral. This is our birch tree white, our powder pink, is a really fun light pink tone, but this is a great yarn as well to knit with this sweater. 
and I just love the stitch definition with these DK worsted weight yarns. It really makes the textures pop. And after knitting one of these sweaters, I'm realizing that I need a whole sweater wardrobe, just as many sweaters as I have shawls. So I'm gonna be busy these next couple years, but I'm definitely into the sweater vibe. And this is the Dustlin sweater. And like I showed you earlier, the Dustlin hat uses the same stitch patterns. So if you wanna try this with just one skein of yarn, you could do a skein of your favorite color. It's using those same textures. You could treat it like a swatch for your sweater if you want and knit the Dustlin hat. And the Dustlin shawl is another pattern with that kind of Gansey inspired knit pearl motif. So the Dustlin shawl uses four skeins. This is done in Yellow Brick Road and I think this would look stunning as the sweater. So if you just get a couple more skeins, you could have a full sweater but four skeins is enough for this large shawl, and it's a semicircular shape, really easy using those same stitch patterns, and you could also treat the Dustlin shawl as your gauge swatch. It's definitely a big swatch, I'd say, but four, four skeins of your favorite color, a red Dustlin shawl in that Coquelico colorway. I'm just gonna call this red. I need to get a pronunciation lesson from Amy. And uh, mist, I can say that one. Mist would make a really beautiful neutral with that blue tint for the Dustlin shawl. So have fun with this stitch pattern and you could have a whole matching set or maybe a set in different colors and then you can color block your accessories and your sweater together. So much fun. Well, I hope you love this Dustlin sweater and the other Dustlin patterns as much as I do. And one thing you can use is taking the small hat. You could try knitting the Dustlin hat and you could use that as your gauge swatch. So if you don't want to do a swatch, I recommend knitting the hat with just one skein of yarn and then measuring your gauge and then seeing what size works best for you for the sweater. But uh, take a look at those patterns and all the yardage requirements are in them. But yeah, I used six skeins for my sweater. You might need anywhere between like four or eight skeins for the larger sizes. But uh, the shawl uses only four skeins. So that's another kind of intermediate project. If you don't want to tackle a full sweater, you could try the shawl or a one skein wonder for the hat. But can't wait to see all your progress and you can share those sweater projects with hashtag Dustland Sweater and I'll see you in the next video.